Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful 21st of June, 2024, day and a half into summer. And it feels like summer. Yay. Hope you're all hydrated. Tonight's episode basically is hatred and the heat. Contradictions in the city of T.O. when it comes to hate speech and people panicking about the heat wave that's hitting eastern Canada and eastern United States. Oh, test, test, test. I guess summer is unbearable for some of these woke idiots. Anyhow, <laughs> listener view discretion is advised because I will swear, smoke cigarettes, and make fun of politicians during this episode with funny faces and rude gestures. All that more on the show. Please, ladies and gentlemen, stick around. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. He is Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, your episode 294, Hatred and the Heat. Oh, my goodness. What's going on in today's world? Oh, my God. So much hatred and heat. There. Must be summertime. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Christy Knuck. Hope you've all had a productive day. I know I've had been working a lot. Getting a few extra hours there at the feedlot. Things on the go. Uh, if you like and hear what you see, please click like, subscribe, share this con- content, all of your social media platforms, too. Share and subscribe, comment, share, subscribe, comment, all good stuff. And this podcast is also brought to you in part by and supported by the Veterans for Freedom Network. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Stand to. Link will be in my description. You can follow them for more information. Stand to. Veterans for Freedom. And coming soon, Veterans for Freedom Television. That's right. You'll be seeing yours truly on that network once it's up and running with other like-minded individuals and other vets speaking their minds comedy all that good stuff so stay tuned for veterans for freedom television coming soon hi everybody i'm your host Krusty canuck like i said i had a great uh past couple of days since my last episode thank you very much those individuals that subscribed recently and have said your kind words too you know one round of applause you guys are awesome all that good stuff i've had some kind comments on instagram too saying that i have a good radio voice why thank you now it's time ladies and gentlemen sit back and have some radios to succeed yeah, with the first Krusty Canuck. Okay, enough of that. Shit. Anyhow, the Tyler card said, <laughs> hatred and heat. So it's been brought to my attention uh, lately that there's still a lot of anti semitism going around in the greater uh, cities of this country. Montreal, Vancouver, uh, some rumblings in Edmonton, and of course, Toronto, you know, the center of the known universe, that big city. And uh, I'll have a little video here from Adrian Batchelor, from the son. Uh, the Toronto School Board District, or the Toronto District School Board, you know, the big governing body in Toronto that educates kids about lies and stuff like that, uh, basically have put in a policy that doesn't want to talk about Israel, apparently, or you can't acknowledge Israel for some reason, okay? Because apparently, according to the logic of these counselors, okay, uh, <laughs> they want to stop anti-Palestinian racism. Now, from the footage I've seen from independent news reports and even some of the mainstream reports, there is a giant rise of anti-Semitism going on here, okay, from every college campus, i.e. McGill in Montreal and the University of Toronto, people sitting in, camping out, stating how much they don't want any more uh, university influence or any products bought or sold to Israel in plight of this war that's going on. And you're also seeing a lot of protesters that have gone around to Jewish neighborhoods in the GTA protesting and whistling and calling names uh, to Jewish people in their homes. And yet the Toronto School Board figures, okay, we're going to stop this this behavior by telling Jewish kids not to think about anything or telling, not telling stories about Israel. No, you see, not acknowledging Israel, by the way I read it. Now, I'll put a video up here for you shortly, ladies and gentlemen, um, but you decide. Now, the way I was raised, it was simple. You don't hate people because of their religion. You don't condemn people because of their skin or their gender. That's the way I was raised. It wasn't a perfect household, but a perfect household nonetheless. All right? And if you're going to sit there and take sides during this filthy, disgusting fucking war, then you go right ahead and take all the sides you want. But 
I was raised in a Canada where you tolerated people of all color, cultures, all ethnicities. It didn't matter where they were from. You welcomed them. It didn't matter if you were Jewish. It didn't matter if you were Christian. It didn't matter if you were Muslim. It didn't matter if you were Buddhist. It didn't matter if you were Sikh or Sikh, how they say it. it didn't matter if you're an atheist. It didn't matter if you're a fucking Scientologist. No one cared. But now, according to this article in Toronto Sun, this, this news report, and other articles that are around national papers, they don't want to teach kids about this. They don't want kids to acknowledge it that they're Jewish or not. Right? And how do you fight racism? You don't talk about race. How do you fight anti Semitism? You don't be anti Semitic. How do you fight Islamophobia? You don't be against Islam. How do you fight Christianity? You, you don't show anything about it. You think for yourself. And when you look at all three major religions, it doesn't matter what faith you are. I'm not going to condemn you if you have this faith. I'm not going to condemn you if you believe in God, if you believe in Muhammad, if you believe in the Holy Cow, or if you believe in Buddha. I don't care. <clears throat> what I care about is that you try to be good to people and you set the example. Because I know for a fact every religion has a golden rule. You want others, you want to you. Treat people the way It's that simple. And you don't have to be a Christian. Be Jewish, you don't have to be Muslim. Hell, you don't have to be atheist to do that. Just be a fucking adult. It's that simple. How many wars in our histories have been fought over religions? Now, I could just hear the SJWs cringing. Oh my God, it's Christianity's fault. Not entirely. There have been other faiths and other doctrines that have come and gone over the centuries where people have fought for and died for and bled for and been tortured for over and over again. You know, early Celts fighting the pit Romans. Both religions clashed. Both lifestyles clashed. You know, early Christians versus the pagans. Roman Catholics versus this. Roman Catholics versus that. Ottomans over this. Persians over that. Back and forth. Crusades. We could go on and on for hours about all these religious wars. These holy wars. Okay. There's also something in the mainstream media too about how uh, Ezra Levant of uh, Rebel Media and I've actually met Ezra. He's a nice guy, you know, and he's not your typical, uh, how do you say, pro this, pro that. He was raised in a Jewish household. He is Jewish. Uh, I don't think he really practices the faith too much. But make a long story short, uh, Rebel Media hired a van to drive around the greater uh, GTA, greater Toronto area, uh, basically saying this isn't Syria, this isn't Lebanon, this isn't Iraq, this isn't uh, Palestine, this is Canada. And a lot of people are cringing, talking about hate speech. Oh my God, how dare you drive this van around and say such vile words? Now, I'm a firm believer in freedom of speech. I have said this numerous times, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't phase me what you say. Now, one could say it's bad taste, one could say it's rude. In a way, it is. But it's not hurting anybody, it's not killing anybody, it's not telling people to convert. It's not telling people how they have to think and how they have to live. It's just reminding you about geography. It's the way I look at it. It's that simple. You know, and that's all it takes, ladies and gentlemen, for someone to stand up and take a stand on something they believe in. Now, regardless of if it's bad taste or not, it's still freedom of speech. And there's a public outcry to investigate hate speech. And as the title card said right here, you know, hatred and the heat. Double standards, T.O.? There's quite a few double standards because I just mentioned how many people have harassed Jewish citizens and Jewish students at the big two universities I mentioned. And yet there's no hatred being invested there. Why is that? Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And you're back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 294 of the Krusty Yank Podcast, Hatred and the Heat. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck. If you like it here to see, please click like and subscribe. Share this content all over your social media platforms. And now it's time for Radio Sexy. Oh, my God. Okay, enough of that shit. Anyhow, as I was saying earlier, Hatred and the Heat. Oh, we're seeing a lot of double standards when it comes to the whole plight of citizens in both of our countries, the United States and in Canada. Okay, and what's going on in Palestine and Israel? Okay, I personally don't care what faith you are. I just want to keep the dirty war out of here. 
I want to keep the dirty, filthy, ancient hatred out of here. That's me. I have a right to say that. You have a right to agree with it or disagree with it. But you're not going to be hurt because of that opinion. And if you find any kind of pain in someone's opinion, if you find pain in someone's opinion on something, maybe you better grow up a little bit more. Maybe you should assess what your lifestyle is. Maybe you should assess your educational background or your educational pursuits. Because if you're going to be hurt over words, you're not going to be doing anybody a favor. Now, was that truck tasteless? Hmm. Some would say yay, some would say nay. Some really don't give a shit. Someone's displaying a message. How many flyers were put out for missing uh, Israelis and taken down again? Right? How many people protested and said rotten things about the Jewish people? How many people protested and said rotten things about Palestinian people? Right? Why are people encouraging the Toronto Police Service to investigate this truck and investigate Ezra Levon in regard to that truck when there was more hatred, more bottles being tossed, bricks being tossed, students being threatened, than a handful of people being offended over words? Contract, double standards. Okay? There is a, there's a radio expert I heard today, uh, John Tory, former mayor of Toronto. Yes, he's on radio now. But I think a long story short, we all remember him when it came to the lockdowns, when it happened to Emerson's barbecue, and how he treated people uh, in regards to lockdowns and shutting down businesses. And he was stooping an assistant, right, just before he left politics because, you know, he was power, you know, a great mayor and everything. He had a little loving on the side. So the man's full of shit as far as I'm concerned. But he has a good exchange back with Ezra Levant in regards to that uh, that advertising truck there. And I will leave that in the description for you, ladies and gentlemen. You can listen amongst yourselves. It's kind of a heated debate. And I could, I could tell arrogance on both sides of the conversation. But nonetheless, you know, something had to be said. It was said. And you either like it or not like it or agree with it or disagree with it. That's fine. That's basic liberty. Freedom of speech is essential. Regardless of how heinous the words may be, we have to tolerate freedom of speech. It is that simple. I'm offended every time I hear the Prime Minister speak. I'm offended every time I hear Christian Freeland speak and tilt her head like a little puppy looking at the television set. <laughs> I get offended by her bullshit half the time, but she has a right to speak. Doesn't matter if she's elected or not. She's a citizen. She has a right to speak. You have the right to speak. You also have the right to speak your mind. And if someone's going to cry to the heavens and be offended over it, then once again, that's a test of their character. And it also goes to prove their lack of spine. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, the Chris Gap Podcast, episode 294, Hatred and the Heat, Double Standards in Toronto, which I just mentioned. So I'm going to queue up this video from Batra's Burning uh, Questions. She does quite the uh, quite the editorial. She uh, puts her stuff on YouTube. And uh, you ladies, ladies and gentlemen, you guys decide, think for yourselves, and uh, send me a comment or two, whatever, once you see this video. And uh, just a reminder, too, if you like me here, just see, click like, subscribe, share this content, all of your social media platforms. And don't be shy. If you feel like donating, please donate. Uh, every little bit helps. I don't mind uh, anything of, uh, I don't mind that at all. I don't mind anything of the sort. Please, if you want to donate, give a guy a hand and uh, it really help me out. So I'll just cue this up here. You know, my ideal goal is to try to get uh, 30 or 40 people per month to donate maybe five dollars if they can and those few extra hundred bucks in a month would really help but like i say uh, you guys decide so i'll just queue this up and uh like i said sign this yourselves this largest school division the toronto district school board has some explaining to do they recently passed a policy that is raising some serious questions about this board's priorities and particularly from our jewish community where they stand in it. Hello, I'm Adrian Batra. With me are Warren Kinsella and Brian Lilly. I don't think it's unfair to suggest for a moment, Warren, we are all against racism. We all want to fight racism in any way, shape, or form, however it comes to us. We're Canadians. This is, this is like a core value for us. 
But what exactly has the TDSB done that has really suddenly uh, raised the ire, rightly so, of many in the Jewish community? Yeah, and full disclosure, I'm part of a group that's helping to lead the charge against this uh, because it is an enormous threat. Over 500 Jewish parents and their allies showed up at the board earlier this week to try and stop this in committee. Then there was a vote late, late last night. And basically what this does is it delegitimizes the Jewish state. It delegitimizes the Jewish community. It prohibits any discussion of the state of Israel or its legitimacy in the curriculum of the Toronto District School Board, the biggest school board in this country. Some people tried to stop that. There are some good trustees there. They passed, they put forward a motion saying, okay, well, if we're going to talk about anti-Palestinian racism, we should talk about anti-Jewish racism too. That was defeated. So this thing went ahead, and basically what it does is it silences children, Jewish kids, and other kids from talking about the legitimacy of the Jewish state and the Jewish community. And it it is a serious threat because, you know, for example, they didn't even bother. The the director of education said, well, the policy actually doesn't even have a definition of what anti-Palestinian racism is, and they went ahead willy-nilly anyway and adopted it. So um, this now goes to Premier Doug Ford and Education Minister Todd Smith. They are the ones who now have the power to stop this because TDSB has adopted it. And hopefully that's what they do. Brian, I I think that there are a lot of trustees around that table who, you know, are obviously ill-informed and perhaps somewhat uneducated themselves. But they're looking at the demographics. They're looking at numbers. They're looking at who their voting base is. And Mm -hmm. it is in part probably correlates with how how they decided to to vote. But to, to, to pick up on Warren's point, in terms of now this landing in the political arena, we have a new education minister here in Ontario, Todd Smith. He's not said a peep about this. No, he hasn't. I'm not sure he will say very much at all. Um, look, the problem uh, with the Ford government and, and education uh, is that there are some people who just never want to get involved in anything that could be seen as controversial. And too often, I think they win the day. I think Education Minister Stephen Lecce was very good at playing whack-a-mole, and some people complained about that. And they said, well, why, why are you only reacting when uh, after things have already happened? And uh, was at an event where Lecce was questioned on that by parents, and and he quite frankly said, because I find out about this craziness the same time you do. Uh, We have an education system that is overtaken by activists of all kinds. It's Toronto District School Board, it's elsewhere. I I recently was writing about um, the Peel District School Board putting Nakba Day on their list of community uh, holidays to be marked. Um, it's unbelievable that that happened, but the activists out there on various causes spend an awful lot of time working hard to get their agenda into the school, uh, into the school boards, into the classrooms. It's why people need to pay attention when it comes to voting for your school trustee. School trustees still matter. And, and, but too many of us don't pay attention. And so, the, the lunatics are running the asylum, as the saying goes. And, and and I think we saw that with the way some of these votes went down on on both Tuesday and Wednesday evenings. Warren, I think that it's such a critical point that was so pronounced during COVID. You know, parents were in, like got to see what their kids were learning because they were home and they were on screens and they heard them in their conversations in classrooms. And you saw a lot of that Uh, a lot of parents sort of questioning, well, where are the basics here from what my kid is learning? Um, Taking that one step further, post-October 7th, the Hamas terrorist attack, is why we're having this discussion right now, is why this is even on the table. Last word to you, Warren. Yeah, and like, it is not available to the the province. Nobody should be under any illusion if Todd Smith or anybody else at Queen's Park says, well, we don't really have the power or the ability to get involved here, because they have been kind of quiet on some of these problems. 12 separate times 
Stephen Lecce, who was an excellent minister of education, 12 separate times, I researched it this morning, intervened in decisions made by school boards on a whole range of issues. So yeah. when they feel they need to get involved, they do get involved. They need to get involved in this. This is setting a dangerous precedent for and the Lecce, largest school board in the country. Lecce yeah. changed the legislation uh, so that the Minister of Education does have the power to get involved. There's exactly. still limitations. Yes. They changed the legislation uh, because so many boards are, you know, being run by people who aren't qualified to do the job. Yeah. So, you know, Doug well, Ford and Todd Smith, over to you. Well, to Todd Smith, the new Minister of Education Ontario, I hope you're paying attention. To Premier Ford, put your money where your mouth is. You've been very strong in talking in defense of the Jewish community. Well, now it's time to make a change. Well, let us know what you think in the comments below. Like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to thetorontosun.com. You're going to find commentary and coverage there. You will not find anywhere else. Yeah, and that was Adrian Batra, Warren Kinsella, and Brian Lilly from the Toronto Sun, respectively. So, making it forbidden to mention Israel. What does that tell you, ladies and gentlemen? Basic censorship, right? We're stopping racism with racism. Fighting fire with fire, right? Getting rid of the smell of cat urine with more cat urine. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And you're back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 294 of the Crossing Your Podcast, Hatred and the Heat. Yes, I do have an article here I queued up uh, for Rebel News spotting the van, but I'm not going to keep talking about that. Uh, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting really sick and tired of people so upset over words. All the fake pro clutchers out there, all the fake virtue signalers out there. Oh, my God, how do you say this? Oh, my God, how come you, you say that? Because we can say it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? This is my personal feeling towards religion. You do you, I do me. They do them, they do they, whatever. Okay? Personally, I do not believe in a higher power. There might be something up there, I don't know. I don't believe in things like that. That's me. But I'm not going to condemn you if you do believe or if you do not believe. I believe there's evil. I believe there's energies. I believe there's forces beyond our comprehension. Because we as a species just don't understand it yet. That's my personal belief. All right? Now, are some of my fans going to leave my page? Are people going to get upset and cry and get all mad at me? If you do, then it proves me right. It's character. It's spine. It's dedication. If you agree with me, great. If you disagree with me, that's great too. Okay? That's the thing. We're all supposed to get along here. That's the thing. I personally fought for people that were oppressed. Okay? And there's people in my life that passed away because of that war in Afghan. There's people I've known, people I've grown with, people I grew to like and care about that are gone now because of that war in Afghanistan. So I have every right to speak my mind when it comes to human evil and human good. What say you? Anyway, carrying on with the whole heat, well, there's there's a <laughs> there's a lot of speculation, especially east coast of Canada and the eastern United States too, about the record temperatures that are going on as we speak. Well, welcome to summer. Okay, now last year they had the big hype over the wildfires that were going on, saying that planet is burning, planet is burning, planet is burning, because you had people walk out in certain areas and set a fire. Now, the person I know in the Alberta forestry industry in the forestry service, she would tell me every year there's a certain percentage of natural fires that occurred, i.e. from lightning strikes, and human error, i.e. ignorant people with cigarette butts and leaving campfires unattended. Every year there's a certain percentage of that. And she even validated, too, the hype we went on last year. There was a lot of arson going on. So if you're going to complain about the heat and listen to the hype of these politicians that sit in AC offices, AC homes, AC cars that burn fuel, not to mention AC planes, 
that fly them all over the country for them to sit there and tell us this, shake their finger at us and call us polluters, you know, because we don't buy their hype as much as they thought we were going to. They can basically sit on this and rotate. You know what I mean? Summertime, ladies and gentlemen. I remember the summer of 85. Correction, the spring of 85, before we had that big tornado. If any of my fans are from the Grand Valley or Barrie area that were living there during of May of 1985, I'm sure they remember that April. We had record temperatures then, too. And we don't remember hearing things about climate hype, climate danger, climate this, climate that. I remember being told by our principal in one of our big assemblies saying, don't slack off in your schoolwork because you think it's summertime, right? I remember my parents telling me about how some they've had some Aprils and early Mays that were really, really hot, probably because the way the earth moves around the sun, that kind of thing, you know, the global thing. But there was no hype. There was no worry about it. So when it comes to the heat, take heed. Pay attention carefully. Is the climate changing? Well, it changes all the time, apparently. According to actual science, you know, scientists that are not paid off, like Dr. Patrick Moore and the Friends of Science, those individuals, right? Temperature changes all the time. If you're going to believe Stephen Gilbo and the Prime Minister, we want to take more of your money for the sake of the national debt, but the <coughs> they say it's for <coughs> net zero on climate change, then you can see who's full of shit. Am I a client, climate denier? Well, you, to an extent, yeah. When it comes to costing me a small fortune every year to line the pockets of NGOs and politicians, you're damn right I'm a climate denier. Because how many of these solutions have they come up with, ladies and gentlemen? How many viable solutions have our great leaders, our great leaders come up with and do stopping said climate change to stop the overwhelming heat or to stop the overwhelming cold? What do they come up with? Right? Let's burn some more. Let's be harder on the electric grid. Let's have no way to really accommodate to increase electricity, clean electricity. Let's have no way to accommodate clean LNG. No, no, no. We're just going to take more money out of you and call you a thinner if you don't walk the line. So when it comes to this heat, hydrate. Keep your wits about you. Okay? Have a couple of bottles of water in your car or in your cooler or in your truck. Wherever you go, just in case you get a little peckish, need some water, drink it. <clears throat> the bare minimum I carried in Afghanistan when I had all my kid on was roughly eight to nine liters. That was the bare minimum that I carried. And every time we stopped someplace and met up with anybody else, we'd get a couple extra bottles of water if we could, just to keep things on the level. And we're drinking water all the time. And that was fucking hot there. Right now, people are complaining about the heat in the East Coast. People are complaining about the heat, heat in the Eastern United States. It's summer, ladies and gentlemen. Summer's coming early, so enjoy it. Get out, get some sun, get some natural vitamin D. Get out, move around. Like I said, hydrate. Eat some more fruits. Eat some more fresh vegetables. Keep active. Stay away from the fatty foods. Stay away from the garbage. Get into more sustenance. Now, I understand the prices are tough and high, but there's ways you can work around that. Popsicles. That was a big thing when we were a kid. Kids. Popsicles. Just popsicles. Hot outside, walk around. Just be active. Be yourself. Stop buying the effing hype. It's that simple. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I have been Krusty Canuck on this 21st of June, 2024. I wish nothing but good things for you too. I will try to have an episode up Sunday at a decent time too. Uh, I'm kind of running kind of late tonight. I worked a bit later today, so I had to go come home, you know, make a nice dinner for my wife. We had chicken. Oh, yes, chicken is excellent. Yes. <laughs> Delicious bird, yes, with mashed potatoes and gravy. Oh, yes, my delicious. And I had to make time for some sexy radio. That's right. Sit on back and listen to uh, Krusty Canuck and have some sexy radio time, right? Okay. <laughs> anyway, enough of that shit. Like I said, I've been Krusty Canuck in this beautiful 21st of June, 2024. I wish nothing but good things for you all out there. Take care. It is getting warmer, so hydrate. You know, find, find yourself little those little drink uh, companions there. You know, you know, squirt some syrup in there. Make your water taste a little bit more magical than just plain old water, but still hydrate. Keep your wits about you. Keep your chin up. Do what you can. Help you out in these trying times. Let us find the light in this manufactured darkness. And do what you can to be good to people. Stop worrying about words. Start worrying about actions. Your own and others, too. It's that simple. And keep your spine 
<laughs> intact. I'll see you this Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, for another episode. And like I always say, humanity and merit wins the day. Take care, and I'll see you this Sunday. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck podcast. Mama says my boots make my carbine look bigger. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs>